Hello, and welcome to another 8-minute demo. Today we're going to be talking about why Opalis. In recent demonstrations, I've been asked, why would I choose Opalis? Why wouldn't I use a connector solution or a point solution? Or doesn't that already have that capability in a system center product? Or even to the point of they're asking, why wouldn't I use a competitor product? Well, today we're going to talk through the value prop of Opalis, so hopefully we get that answer to why Opalis. My name is Charles Joy. I'm a solutions architecture tech evangelist for the system center suite. Now you've probably seen these five value props before, but we'll be going over them in a little more detail during this demonstration. I'm going to be going through each one and then giving you a demonstration within Opalis um, that corresponds. The first is multi-vendor integration, no rip and replace, or vendor lock-in. Opalis has always been touted as a key player in the heterogeneous data center. And that is because we allow you to integrate all your tools, regardless of what vendor they are, together and make them work. Let's take a look at an example. Let's take a look at what we mean by heterogeneous integration. So, first thing we need is a scenario. Let's say we want to monitor operations manager for a certain kind of alert, and we want to then create incidents in three different ticketing systems. So let's go ahead and grab some objects for that. So first thing we're going to do is grab a monitor alert object from the operations manager integration pack. And then immediately we want to go ahead and create an incident. First one we can create is in remedy. The second one we can create is let's say in service manager. And the third one, uh, let's say CA unit center, service desk. So we just go ahead and link these up. And then we would obviously have to configure each one individually, but essentially, if you have all these configured, you will be monitoring for alerts in Operations Manager, and then able to immediately create um, incidents in each one of these three other non-Microsoft products, Remedy, Service Manager, uh, HP Service Manager, and CA Unicenter Service Desk. Now, of course, because the workflow engine uh, is so powerful and you can do just about anything with it, you can take the data, data from this object, pass it on to all three of these, and then you can go ahead and take the next action, which might be um, trigger uh, remediation uh, workflow that has already been created. So we would just, you know, pass the information that we need to into this trigger policy object. And this, of course, would be a sub-workflow that had been created for a specific remediation type. And we can go ahead from there, wait for that to complete, go ahead and update the ticketing systems, the respective ticketing systems, with information. So we go ahead and update uh, Remedy. Move that out a little bit. We can update Service Manager. And of course, finally, we would update CA Unicenter Service Desk. And then finally, if you wanted to, you can update and close the alert. Whatever you want. Now, this workflow would obviously need some more configuration uh, to make sure the data is flowing through it the way you want it to. But essentially, what this demonstrates is the ability to pass the information from, let's say, Operations Manager to three other different non-Microsoft products, trigger some remediation, update those three non-Microsoft products, and then finally update Operations Manager. That is heterogeneous integration. The second is a set of pre-built activities and workflow processes to speed up time to value. Opalis is essentially a blank slate when you install it, so these guide you in some best practices and to get you started creating your own workflows. Let's take a look at what's offered and where you can get them. Before we dive into what's in the Microsoft Workflow Catalog, let's take a look at where we can get it. So let's just pop over to Bing. Let's type in uh, Microsoft Opalis Work flow catalog and we can see the first one here is for the SP1 release which actually had the workflow catalog listed if we scroll down here we should be able to find the actual URL it's located in so there's the URL go ahead and click on that 
And then you can see here in the TechNet blog for Opalis, you can see there's the workflow authoring examples and samples. And here's a description of each, and you could download them all or download them separately. I took the liberty of going ahead and downloading and importing them already. So let's take a look at what they look like in Opalis. So you get a set of authoring examples and workflow examples. So if I expand this out just a little bit, we can see there are different authoring examples available. So if you wanted to learn about workflow control, you go ahead and you can click in here and it explains or shows how to use the workflow control objects. If you wanted to learn how we would uh, recommend that you start looking at the SSH object, you go ahead and click on the SSH folder. Alternatively, if you want to look at some workflow examples themselves, you can go down to the workflow section here and then look at different examples that the product team has set up for, let's say, Active Directory for a password reset. And then if you take a look at the workflows themselves, you'll see that they're documented and in a way that we recommend that you start looking and learning about the workflows themselves. So that's what you get when you go out and download and import the Microsoft Workflow Catalog. We certainly hope that it helps you get started creating your own workflows. The third is the Publish and Subscribe Data Bus, which is used to share data and initiate tasks within silos and essentially between disparate products that are, could be the same vendor or different vendors. Let's take a look at how the Data Bus works. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Data Bus, undoubtedly the most valuable um, value prop that Opalis has to offer as an uh, integration, automation, orchestration tool. So the first thing we need is a scenario. So we're going to, because we need to be showing you how we pass data through the workflow. So let's go ahead and just read data in from a text file. So we're going to go ahead to the text file management category, drag out a read line object, and go ahead and configure it. So we're going to go out and choose a file. I have one in my demo folder here. Choose some file encoding. And then what line numbers? I want 1-3, let's say. Go ahead and finish that. And to show you what's in that file, to be completely transparent, let's go ahead and take a look. It's just a file with a listing of different IP addresses or host names. So I'm going to go ahead and come back into Opalis. Let's say we want to um, perform some action on that data that's in that file. Let's say we want to ping it, for example. So we're going to grab the ping wrapper object, which is get computer IP status link them up, and then open this guy up. Now there's only one field in here, so we could hard code something, but that wouldn't be very smart because we want to dynamically get it from that file. So all we have to do to access the data bus, which is automatically there, is right click in the white space, subscribe, and go to publish data. Once we've done that, we have access to all the previous objects. Now this is the second object, so we only have access to the first, but we then have the ability to read in whatever data we want from that particular object that we've subscribed to. In this case, we want line text. We go ahead and finish. And then what the data bus allows at this point during execution is that the data will come in from the read line object and be automatically passed to the get computer IP status object. And that's all the work you have to do. No coding or scripting with this subscribe, um, publish subscribe model for the data bus. And finally, just for demonstration purposes, we can put a pop-up on the end. Go ahead, connect that up. Identify where we're going to send the pop-up, and then we can access the data on the, the, the data bus. So go ahead, subscribe, publish data. You can see now we have access to get data from the read line object or the computer IP status object. So let's get some information from both. File path. And then let's just get a little bit of information from the get computer IP status. And let's go computer to ping at, and we could just say at what percentage? This way, when it pops up, we'll get the file path we read from, and then a statement saying this computer is at this percentage of packets returned.
Go ahead and hit finish. And actually, before we go ahead and run this, let's change the logic in this link so that we get success and failure warnings because I know some of the lines in that file are not pointing to systems that I have in my virtual environment. So now we go ahead and check it in and run it and we should get three pop-ups. Um, the first one's probably going to succeed and the second will show failure notifications. So here's the file and here's that statement we made dynamically localhost at 100% packets returned. Second one this IP address at 0% packet return. And the last one, again, 0% packets return. And that's because the IP addresses we pass in from that file are not on my virtual network. So um, we're able to get success and failure messages through that pop up. But the data has been passed dynamically from one object to the next dynamically over that data bus. And remember, anytime you see the blue text, that means it's dynamic and it's coming from the data bus. The fourth is that the configuration of the workflows is done without coding or scripting. Now, the vast majority of the objects, when you drag them onto the screen, are forms based. You bring them up, you fill out the form, and then you're done configuring. There are some options to code or script within objects, and we'll get to those in a different 8 minute demo. But for now, let's take a look at some of the forms-based configuration for the workflows. Now, you've already seen this in other demonstrations where we fill out the forms when we gra grab objects onto the screen. But I want to show you this specifically for this demonstration. Let's go ahead and create a new workflow. Let's call it no coding. So let's just go ahead and grab an object and show you what it looks like. So we go ahead, grab get computer IP status, we can open that up, and we see a form here. We're not coding or batch file or scripting or anything here. We're just typing in a name, and that object is done. That's configured. We, similarly, if we go to one of the file management objects, say we wanted to copy a file. I'll open that up. We could even browse to things. I want to copy this file to a specific folder. and then I fill in the other things. I'm not writing anything to the IO class or anything like that. I'm just filling out a form. And finally, let's just choose one more object, something, uh, you know, text file, read in the data that's there. We can uh, go ahead and uh, insert line. Again, a form, which we can go identify, choose the file encoding we want, what text do we want to enter in there? And then what line number do we want to insert it into? We're just filling out a form. We're answering questions. There's no coding or scripting to the any classes or I.O. or anything like that. Now, there obviously are objects that are available for you to add your coder script, but um, for this example and this demonstration, this value prop, we're just taking a look at the ma vast majority of the objects that do not require any coding or scripting. The fifth and final value prop that we're going to be talking about in this demonstration is that the workflows can be built quote unquote intelligently with rule based branching, which essentially means you can filter within those links to make decisions during runtime for the execution of that workflow. So you may be monitoring operations manager for X number types of alerts and then you want to um, send those down different paths and that's where the rule based branching comes in. Let's take a look at what that looks like in the product. The last value prop we're going to talk about today is the ability to build intelligent workflows so we can build rule based branching into our workflows to make decisions quote unquote during execution time. So the most common usage of this is, let's say we have um, a monitor alert object from Operations Manager, and we want to perform three different actions based on the criteria coming from that workflow object. So let's say the first thing we want to do is query a database, and maybe the second, and you know, and maybe the second operation we want to do, like an OR clause, we want to create an incident in Remedy. And then finally, for one, we just want to trigger an existing workflow that we might have. So if we add these objects on and connect them up, 
Now if we just left it like this, it would do all three all the time. But because we're building this to be intelligent, we want it to be specific. So for the first link, we would change it to a specific criteria. So if the custom field contained create incident, and this would be reading from the custom field, um, and this would be reading from the custom field field in operations manager for the words create incident, then it would go down this path. Now you can see it's still named link. That's a cosmetic thing. We can go back and change that. So we could call that create incident. We could even change the color if we wanted to. Now for the other ones, similar story, except we're going to filter on something different, possibly. So here, we might want to filter on um, whether it is a mod or alert or not. Equals, and then true or false. So if it's true, it's a mod or alert, we want to go ahead and query a database for some reason, or get information, or update a database table, or something like that. So this will be um, is alert. Is mod or alert again we could change the color. And then finally we might want to uh, trigger a policy. So we would go ahead and filter on possibly this time the same custom field but instead this time it equals something specific like um, remediate. In which case once again we could go ahead and trigger a remediation. And again, for cosmetics, go ahead and change that link name to remediate and maybe change the color once again. And that's how you can build intelligent workflows within Opalis. We certainly appreciate you watching. Thank you.